I arrived about 1 o'clock in the afternoon when everything had been set up. This is John Christman's portable uh, uh, trailer tower. It's a lift up, crank up device, runs by an electric winch. Several antennas were on it. The tent outside the trailer was parked near the road with the signs in hopes that some people would stop in to see what's going on. This trailer belongs to Fred Lloyd. He's the uh, uh, owner of the QRZ.com website. We'll talk to Fred in a few minutes. It was an overcast day, but the forecast wasn't so good. All of a sudden the wind started picking up and we realized that we may have a storm coming, but it was a ways out yet. Communication trailer was set up and running on a generator. Uh, I forgot what band they were operating on, off the dipole, off the tower. Oh, I'm, I'm innocent. You're proven guilty. Fred, welcome to Bemidji. How'd you end up here for field day? Well, we were looking for something in the area. We wanted to spend the 4th of July in Detroit Lakes with some friend of our, friends of ours. And we came to Bemidji because this was the nearest ham radio uh, activity that we could find. Now, tell me about QRZ.com. Is that what I saw on the license plates? That's right. QRZ stands for? It's a ham radio abbreviation from Telegraph Days, and it means literally, who's calling me? Or as I like to say, who dat? Who dat? <laughs> and uh, I started the website, QRZ.com, 20 years ago, and I have the call sign database online, and uh, that's basically what we do. I forgot that uh, the internet's been around for 20 years. Yeah. Time's going fast. Oh, well. Oh, gosh. Um, how long are you gonna stay in Bemidji? We're going to be in Bemidji probably close to a week. Uh, after field day, we're going to move down to the trailer park, uh, the, actually the RV park. Uh, Oak Haven? Oak, ha Oak, yes. Oak something like that. Yeah. And uh, that'll be our hub as we, we're going to take a couple trips to Detroit Lakes and just around the area sightseeing. And then we're slowly going to start our, our uh, sojourn to Hartford. Is that for the AWR convention? Yes, it is. I, I'm one of the featured speakers there this year. Okay, all right. Yeah. What's going to be your subject? All about QRZ, past, present, and future, and uh, I'm going to show people how to uh, uh, how to use some of the new things on the website. I guess I better go check it out. Now I see you have an ICOM 7000. What are you using for an antenna for HF, if any? We've got a, a dipole uh, mounted outside, and it's got a, a remote antenna tuner at the apex. Uh, it's an inverted V, uh, and it's working quite well. Where is the antenna? I didn't see it. Uh, right, right. It's on the tower there. It's in oh. front of us. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, are you are you using the beam antenna on this tower? Uh, the other tent is using the beam. Oh, antenna. the other tent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's. It starts to rain out. Is <laughs> you have to pack up pretty fast in that tent. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, you finish in Connecticut at Hartford at the ARRL convention. Then do you head start heading south? It's still summertime, so where are you going to go? Uh, we're probably going to head west again, and we might just turn around and come back this way. Uh, we're very fond of northern, of the Northwest, the Pacific Northwest. We would like to stay out until September at least, so that you know the main part of summer is gone. It'll still be over 100 when we get back, even if we wait until October. In, a, in Arizona? Yes. Oh yeah. So, uh, but we probably will be getting back in sometime in mid-September, uh, back to Arizona. But between now and then, uh, we're just going to uh, uh, look for ham radio events to attend, basically. Uh, and also, I tour a few manufacturers. Just last week, I toured Alpha uh, Alpha Amplifiers in Longmont, Colorado, and did a, an essay about their their uh, operation. So, uh, if I, I may uh, stop in on some other manufacturers. Yeah, are you aware of a place called DigiKey? Yes. Up uh, Deep River Falls. I've heard of them. Yes. Quite an operation. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ron Stordahl, the owner, is in Abbotham. Really. And uh, maybe I should email him or get you the email address. 
it might be worth your time to go up to Keeper. I would Falls. love to do that, yes. Uh, while you're that close, it's an hour and a half drive, mm -hmm. roughly. Um, I'll, I'll get you, I'll email Ron and let him know that you may get a hold of him. Sure, yeah, I'd love to. Uh, yeah, I'd like to get his call sign. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't have it with me except my house, but I'll get you your email and I'll send it to you. And okay. Tell me about the website. Uh, you talked about membership, and what's the benefit of membership to go to QRZ? Well, for one thing, it is the sort of the Facebook of ham radio. Uh, anybody who's a ham has either been on QRZ or or is a member of QRZ. Membership is free. We have 500,000 members on the website, and. Uh, uh, and we have a few extras that you can subscribe to and uh, to get more out of the site. Uh, subscriptions, with a subscription you can do things such as remove the advertising from the site, which makes it faster. We have the ability to connect your logging program to directly to QRZ in the back end. We call that, it's with using an XML data service that we have. It's, a, it's our most popular subscription. Uh, it's just $30 a year, which is couple of cents a day mm -hmm. and uh, it gives you the ability to log a contact by just putting in their call sign hit enter and then your computer will go to QRZ and get everything known about that person and completely fill out your logging page for them so it's a very very popular uh, thing and uh, uh, but all in all we uh, we're serving 18 million pages a month uh, 60,000 unique individuals per day visit the site it's like a stadium full of people who come by. Well, that's, you know, that's pretty impressive, especially for somebody from here not knowing what's going on behind the scenes. Now, uh, John Christman told me that you wanted to put your camper here and so forth. How did you, how did you get a hold of John Christman or did he get a hold of you? How did you know him? Um, I, I basically was looking for an event in this part of the country. And I, uh, my wife was helping, and, and uh, uh, we'd become interested in Bemidji because of this television show that had come out, uh, oh. <laughs> uh, Fargo. Yeah. And uh, and so, uh, and then we're just looking around, and we stumbled upon on the on the internet the uh, the Paul Bunyan Radio Club, and so I I saw John's name there, and I wrote him, and I asked him if. If I could tag along, and uh, they were very gracious and welcoming, and, and so that's how we ended up here. Well, it's a good place to park. You out of the way. You're not down by Paul and Pape, where it's very crowded. This is a good spot. Yeah. I don't know how you're going to get out of here, but it's a good spot. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll just back up real slow. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> um, what else do I need to know? Or should know about QRZ. Being I've only been there maybe 15 times to look at whatever. You, you, I didn't know you had the membership. There's some, obviously some benefits to the membership, and did you say something about downloading contest programs or some type of program? Well, we, we actually have a logging program built into the website. Oh. So if you if you want to log everything you're doing in real time, you can do that right on the site. It doesn't cost anything. Uh, and uh, coming out here in just a, another month or so, we're going to start issuing awards. So you'll be able if you have if you've worked 100 countries, you'll be able to get the DXCC from ARRL, and you'll be able to get uh, QRZ's award as well. So we're going to offer, you know, paper to put up on your wall. Uh, so that's that's really it. We're uh, we're just a kind of a full service website. We like to to do you know everything that people need for ham radio. Are you, do you know the name Glenn Johnson? Glenn Johnson's a paper hanger. He had the biggest ham station in the Midwest. What's his name? Was it W0JG? Yeah. I think it was WJ. Uh, ICOM sponsors him all over the place. GG. Huh? GG. GG. W0GJ. Uh, I have a video of his ham station, which is quite remarkable, on YouTube, and it'll be on the address. We'll find it later. And he brings back major awards in contesting. I mean, he wins every one of them. <laughs> I thought everybody knows Glenn Johnson. Yeah. But I guess not. Well, I'm, 
I am not as much of an operator, a ham operator, as, as, as most people are. I spend all my time online. You know, if you go to QRZ, we have little counters on every call sign that tells you how many times your call sign's been looked up. Well, mine's been looked up 200,000 times or something like that. Well, that's because they just come to the site and they want to see who, the, who who's behind this big thing. Yeah. But I spend uh, 365 days a year. Every single day of the year, I'm on the site. And I'm I'm answering questions and I'm you know adding content or sometimes I'm just checking in, but uh, uh, it there's no no real uh, substitute uh, for that. What was your question, by the way? I, I was questions. just looking for the different benefits for mm -hmm. uh, the website and what goes on the website. I didn't know they had that many hits because there's no way for somebody out here to judge yeah. how much activity is on a website. Unless you you can go into the guts of the website and look at the counters and so forth. Oh, that, right. So it's hard to judge. Right. And the numbers are a bit shocking to me. They are. Uh, it, it's I can show you. You know, uh, uh, we do track them. We track everything, and, and it's. Uh, I, I'm most impressed myself with the sixty thousand number. Sixty thousand people. Can you see which country they're coming from? Yes. Ah. Uh, how much activity are you getting from China? Not, not a great deal. Our big countries are Germany, Italy, yeah. uh, England, uh, South America, Australia, uh, France, Spain. Russia. Yeah, there's a lot going on in Russia. And ham radio. Right. But I, I understood talking to Glenn, there's quite an amateur community. Or they, they probably operate out of clubs. I don't think they have their own individual stations. But there's China is taking them off now as far as ham radio. And that's why I was wondering how many hits you had from China. We have a few we have a few members, you know, that, that come in regularly from China, but but uh, it's mostly a language thing. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, we we're, we're basically an English website, so uh, we don't see a lot, but especially it's mo it's especially difficult for the you know, the Chinese character set which Really don't really you support. don't have to go there. Yeah. They have their own website. Yeah. Um, so you know which country they're coming from and how many hits you get from each country. Is there any Japan one? Japan must be big, isn't it? Japan is big, but again, they they're all in in their own language. There are more hams in Japan than there are in the United States. Really? Mm -hmm. That surprises me. Yeah. There's like a million or more more in Japan alone. Wow. But most of them you'll never hear from. You know, if the, with the ham, this, what's, how many hams? Seven, seven hundred thousand in the state, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. You know, you, that's a A double RL has got a pretty good thing going. Our seaplane products association, we hit eight thousand, and now we're about seven. Mm -hmm. So we have, we're we're trying to run this thing on in, on the uh, dues forty five dollars on seven thousand people. Mm -hmm. Now you look at the dues for A double RL and seven hundred thousand, they must have money to burn. They, they must have. Uh, well, the ARRL has about 220,000 members or so. Oh, that's right. I'm thinking it'll come Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's still a good number to work with. Yeah. Uh, we we do have, our site has more traffic than the, than they do. Uh, but uh, uh, we, we, we sort of do different things, so we're really complementary. That we don't really overlap anywhere in our services to the web. Well, I'm especially interested in who, from what country, and it looks like you correct me. How about South America? Is there any one country that stands out? Brazil and Argentina are the are the big ones. Uh, the uh, LU land and PY land, they're they're pretty big. A lot of lot of activity coming out of there. But I, when I show you when I if I show you the Google Analytics map that I have that, that shows real time where they're coming from, that's it's amazing. Even the small countries in Central Africa will get one or two hits over the course of the day. Uh, any any ham anywhere on the planet that has a, an internet connection is going to go to QRZ. I, I uh, uh, started this website in ninety in ninety three, and uh, in in ninety seven or ninety eight, I went to Tahiti on vacation, and. I'm, I had a small portable shortwave radio and I'm sitting there on the beach just listening to whatever 
and I heard a uh, 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 some guys talking on a ship out in the middle of the Pacific, and the and towards the end of the conversation, the one guy told the other guy, "Yeah, I'm good on QRZ," and I go. I think my website's getting popular now, you know, I mean, I was really surprised to hear that because I, it really sort of sunk home that it is a global phenomenon. Well, that's terrific. It takes people with a common interest. How about uh, in the Egypt and the, and the Jihadah countries and people, uh, uh, Egypt and uh, I, Iran? We, we, have, uh, we have members from, from everywhere. Uh, we've got a, quite a few sultans and, and things like of that nature on the site. Uh, I got an Iran, a, a postcard from Iran recently, a, a letter, and I swear it had it had uh, a small donation in it, of five or ten dollars. And then I looked at the postage on it. The postage was fifteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was a very special letter, really, to receive from Iran. Well, really he, maybe he wanted a card back, and that's what the money was for. I don't think so. No, <laughs> he, said, he said it, and it was a donation for the site. So, but it is, I, I'm, I'm, you know, uh, we started out as a CD-ROM business. That was really what QRZ, the way it started. Uh, the first thing that I did with QRZ was to create the QRZ CD, which was a call book on CD I remember that. and we sold that for years that call book went on to the Mir space station I got a call from in the, CD form yeah uh, well, eh, not really in CD form but basically Johnson Space Center called me up and asked me how much it cost and I said well don't, don't worry about the cost I'll just send you a copy if you're taking it up in the space station and so I sent it to them and then they transferred it to tape and they took it up with them to it, tape yeah interesting uh, and then the, it also... No, it, wait a minute. You, you gave it to them on what? On CD? Mm hmm And they, had, they put it on tape to take... I wonder why they didn't take the CD. I don't know. Well, I, I really don't know the uh, specifics there or what was available to them, but I do know that it also went on the, uh, on the ISS. Uh, but a few years ago, they stopped calling me, and the reason is is that they have Internet up there now. So, so they could just look it up, if, you know. So, you know, that's the way it's been. As CD-ROM sales started to die off in the, in the late 90s, the, the website business started to go up. So one business died and the other one was born, you know, replaced it, basically. Well, I, I, I think that you would really like to see the DigiKey operation. His, his catalog's like this here. I've, I, I've, I've, I've seen their catalog and, and, and bought from them before, so, but I didn't realize it was a ham business. So. Well, he, 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 it's not a ham business, it's, it's an electronic component business, but Ron is an avid ham, especially into, uh, uh, what do you call it, when you see your location on your website. APRS? APRS. Mm -hmm. we, Glenn Johnson used to have one here, when he moved, took it down. The Bemidji repeater is it just east of town here, and west of town about 45 miles. We have a on a telephone tower site another repeater that's tied to Bemidji, and that if you're a base station you can get that in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and that was there for weather information. Grand Forks weather hams get on, come through what they call Langley into Bemidji, so we have direct communications, and then we have one north of here about 60 miles, so you can get to the Canadian border. And they're all tied together. And when Ron Stordahl wanted to put up the APRS, we had a spare antenna. It wasn't ours, it belonged to the phone company. We can use it until they need it. So we put the APRS on it, which is a really good connection site. It covers quite a ways. It goes way into North Dakota. I don't know how far, how far it goes this way. Um, I told you that for a reason. I can't remember the reason. <laughs> All right, we'll shut down here. Google Analytics shows where my customers or where my website visitors are coming from. The darker the color on the map, uh, is the, or the more visitors, and as you can see the United States and Alaska uh, stick out quite a bit. But you'll notice that anywhere I I take the mouse here, for instance, it said that there's been 167 vi visitors from Greenland. Uh, 
from Iceland there's been 12, <laughs> 1200. Uh, and this is just for today? No, the last 30 days. Okay. Uh, Jan Mayan Island, 122. Uh, if I go to Russia here, 70,000. Mongolia, you were asking about China, 6,000. Yeah. So that's a relatively small number, 6,000. Compared to India, 5,000. It's even smaller, right? It doesn't make any sense. But if we come over here, Brazil, 50,000. Uh, Argentina, 23,000. Even little places like, uh, well, in Colombia, Ecuador. We've got users in Ecuador, Panama. There's no place on the map here where there's not... Uh, Malaysia, Philippines. Yeah, everywhere. Every, it's represented. Japan's quite okay. a few. North Korea. Uh, no, well, North Korea, you're not going to find. Uh, they're one. One. <laughs> it's probably the <laughs> one, one from North Korea, probably the general. Yeah. South Korea, 6,000. So that, that that's that's illustrates the, the geopolitics there. Madagascar, 74. Okay. And no. so, and then they're broken down here by number, and these are the top ten. Uh, United States, Germany, Italy, United Kingdom, Japan, Spain, Poland, France, Russia, and Canada. Those are the top ten. Interesting that the Russian people are coming on the site. That's that's impressive to me, and it's a good sign also. Because it's a good hobby to get involved in, and sometimes countries get together because of a common thing like soccer. Mm -hmm ham radio or whatever it also there's some also interesting things here for instance it says that the average user uh, views 5.29 pages per visit and it's and hangs around for on average of eight minutes and 46 seconds that's the average user okay so uh, if we look at a daily view uh, we had 60,000 people per day, then that's times five pages each, you know, that yep. gives an idea of, uh, if we look at the real-time statistics, uh, this, this is the real-time graph of the traffic coming onto the site right now. And you have, a, you have a software program that sends this to Google or Google does it for you, or how, how does this happen? Uh, each of my web pages has a, a little tag in the web page, and when that page gets viewed, Google finds out about it, okay. and then that, and then they turn around and uh, um, and create this this demographic information. And that would be good for your advertisers to know. That's right. That's your measuring stick. That is indeed. Now, when you talk about advertisers, how many people put an ad or something on there for sale or? Well, on the website itself, we've got 40 or 50 different advertisers. Okay. Here's an, I've got a page here that shows the, um, here's our list of, our list of current advertisers, all Amateur of these. Right. Amateur right here. We usually have on, on the neighborhood of about 40 or 50 different advertisers. Of, ham radio products and then we also have Google which gives us ads that are more mainstream uh, for instance uh, ads like for Verizon or for Chevrolet oh, okay. or, or, or something like that uh, there's a, a fluke ad for example that's provided by Google um, you're on the website now or are you on some yeah this okay. is the main QRZ website okay. right Well, I certainly will visit more often. Well, what you don't know, you think you're going to a typical garage website and it turns out to be something much better. Here at W0CIA, right? Okay, yeah. Should be a picture in there. David Quam. you got no pictures. I, I, I would have to submit it, I guess. Right. Fred was trying to help us out with a technical problem. All three computers didn't talk to each other, and uh, Fred had an idea of what the problem may be. I don't know if they got it resolved or not. Say that again. 
What, what was the problem? Say again. This this computer is acting as the server and it's maintaining oh. the database for the other two computers. Okay. Unfortunately, the other two computers can't see it. I can't find the critter. Is there enough energy RF energy going out? Oh yeah. Okay. Now the three computers are connected. This is uh, Rich Young. He's the campground host at Bemidji State Park, and he's there in the springtime. He'll be leaving in about a week, and he always attends the ham radio club meetings and field day. So, how much? Is, how much may I ask you to invest in this? I figure about sixty in the whole unit. Some close-ups of uh, John Christmas portable tower. It's a lift-up, crank-up. It runs by an electric, 110-volt electric wrench and generator. Besides the beam, there were a couple of dipoles mounted on there. Look at the outside. Rig well, there's riggings on the side you'll see in a minute. I thought that was uh, innovative. Uh, one of the club members uh, welded it on for them. They, they don't slide back in. They come physically off, and they lay it uh, attached down to the trailer when he goes down the road. The hydraulic jack on the tower just kind of stabilizes things more and so do the scissor jacks under, under the trailer. Kilo one echo 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 W zero PJI. W zero PJI W zero PJI calling. W zero BJI W zero BJI. W zero BJI W zero BJI. Copy. And the tower is being cranked down right now. Everybody was looking at a thunderstorm coming our way from the uh, west. A long, narrow string. We thought it might pass, but it didn't. To, uh, to be cautious, take a precaution about this week. Everybody was watching this line of thunderstorm coming in from the west on their cell phones, and it was decided maybe it was a good idea to crank the tower down if the winds became exceptionally high. You can see it lowering now. John is running the winch, and uh, at this point, the dipole got came down. That's the uh, coupling box. Uh, somebody pulled it back up again so we could at least operate uh, on a dipole. It's slick. You gonna tilt it down or move it like that?
And as we looked to the west, it was getting darker and darker, and it's a good thing we pulled everything in the tent and put it in the trailer and put chairs and table. Because when the rain and wind came, it was a it was like a sheet of water for about 15 minutes, and then it was over with. I don't recall how strong the wind was, but it was up there. So it's a good thing we took everything down and put it inside the, uh, uh, the comm trailer. Well, later when the storm was over, uh, the tent was not brought outside, but the tower was put back up at its normal height, and uh, field day continued on. Operations continued after the storm, and that was the end of field day for 2014. It didn't take long when things were packed inside, and bam, here came the rains and the wind.